Hello, this is Luke from MGN and we're back for part 4 of the Dark Deity class overview. Part 4 is going to be Mage. So the classes in Dark Deity, they're split up into 6 different trees with the Ranger, Warrior, Cleric and Mage available during the first mission and then the Rogue and Adept coming shortly thereafter. Today, like I said, we're going to go through a pretty comprehensive guide on the Mage class, what you can expect when using Mage characters, where you can take them, their stats and skills, all the information that you need to plan a mage character. Naturally, if you want to avoid spoiling the class unlocks that come later in the game, or the characters that are available therein, you should probably turn back now because there's going to be spoilers aplenty. Mages work quite like you'd expect, they perform spells and you can do that at either melee or at a range. The class provides the player a number of options for builds. Want to build a slippery and evasive mage that specializes in avoiding attacks at all ranges, then dishing the herb back? We can do that. Want to build a life-stealing pyromancer that heals itself as it hurts? Well, you can do that too. You want to build a mage tank that can neither move or be moved? Guess what? You can do that too. So you see, there's a fair bit of diversity there, and it means that all mages don't have to be frail glass cannons. You can take the tank route early to get the defense stat rolls and talents that you want, then finish up as a fire damage dealing focus to build your mage exactly how you want. It'll be durable and it can do damage, that's perfect. We're going to start with the stats and abilities of the base class in mage, then the stats and abilities of each of the promotional options at level 10, and then obviously the stats and abilities of the level 30 promotions. The base class is called mage, as you'd expect. Their damage type is Arcane, their armor type is Rune Cloak or Cloak, whatever takes you fancy. Their movement range is only 5, but they do have an attack range of 1 or 2. It doesn't have to be one or the other, you can attack from either. Their first, uh, their only class skill as a base class is that they can move an adjacent ally to the opposite side of them. Pretty good utility. Then once you take your mage and you level them up to level 10, you'll get the option to promote. You have four options, the first of which being the Arcanist. Their damage type for the Arcanist is unsurprisingly Arcane. Their armor type will remain Rune Cloak or Cloak. Their movement range will get bumped up to 6 and they'll keep their attack range of 1 or 2. The first class skill for Arcanist is that your power is increased if you didn't move any tiles this turn. So if you don't move, get a bit of a bump in your power. The second is that your mastery stat will contribute also to your accuracy. It's pretty good. Moving on to Battle Mage, that is your second option for promotions at level 10. Damage type for Battle Mage is Storm. Their armor type is Plate. Their movement range will remain at 5. They don't have a lot of maneuverability. Attack range is still 1 or 2, take your fancy. Their first class skill is that their defense is increased by 10% of their magic. This is pretty good and not to be ignored. Second class skill for Battle Mage is that attacking grants all your allies an extra 15% power. So, attack with your Battle Mage first, then follow up with your other units. Third option for level 10 promotions is Conjurer. Your damage type will change to Fire. You will have Leather Armor. You'll get uh, a little bump to your movement range. You'll go up to 6. Attack range stays at 1 to 2. Your first class skill, one of the better ones in Dark Deity, because Lifesteal is brokenly good. Uh, it is, you will heal for 33% of all the damage that you do. That is just as good as it sounds. Second class skill for Conjurer is that you have a 35% chance to add 15% of your current HP to damage. So if you get good growth in your HP, or you pick a character that has good growth in HP, well, that bonus damage is going to add up. Last option for level 10 promotions is the Slippery Magician. Damage type for Magicians is Arcane, their armor type is Leather, they have a 6 movement range, their attack range is still 1 to 2, their first class skill is that you just get an extra tile range on your uh, phase ability when you move allies around. Second class skill is that all the allies around you just passively get 20% extra accuracy, it's pretty good if you're going the support route. Once you hit level 30, you will get uh, four more promotional options, and you don't have to pick the one that coincides with whatever level 10 one you picked. You can mix and match here. You can go defense early, like I said earlier on in the introduction, you can defense early and then damage late, vice versa. First options for level 30 promotions is the wizard. The damage type for wizards, you'll still be arcane if you went that route for base class. 
Their armor type is Cloth. They have a 6 movement range. Their attack range will stay at 1 to 2. The first class skill for Wizard is that damage, or your power, or your damage either way really, is increased by an extra 20% of magic. So not only does it get contributed by magic, you get that bonus of extra 20%. And then your mastery is the, is the second class skill for wizard. The mastery is increased by 20% of your magic. You're going to have good magic pretty much any way you build a mage. So these bonuses, they're going to be really good. Second level 30 option is the battle mage promotion that will change into Aegis. Aegis, whichever you care for. Damage type is Storm. Their armor type is Plate. They finally get a movement, <laughs> movement range boost. They go up to 6. Their attack range is still 1 to 2 first class skill for Aegis is that taking damage grants a ward to your nearby allies and that they'll make them receive more healing. Second class skill for Aegis is that your defense is increased by 10% of magic. If you take that as your level 10 as well, you can get really, really, really great defense sets. Keep in mind that that's defense, not fortitude, so it doesn't affect how much it negates magic damage, just melee. Third option for mage level 30 promotions is the Pyromancer. Unsurprisingly, their damage type is Fire. Their armor type is Chain. They have a 6 movement range. Your attack range is still 1 to 2. First class skill for Pyromancer is that your crit increased by percent of missing health. So if you're down in the dumps, you're a bit low on HP, you're going to crit things. You're going to hurt them. That means that if you've taken the Lifesteal talent at level 10, you can be low health, nuke an enemy, and zip right back up. Second class skill for Pyromancer is that 35% chance to add 20% of your current HP to damage. So this means that Pyromancer can be effective regardless of their HP bar. One works well if you have low, the other works well if you don't. Last option for level 30 promotions is the Slippery Illusionist. Illusionist has a damage type of Arcane, their armor type is Cloak or Rune Cloak, whichever. They have a huge movement range at 9. Their attack range is still 1 to 2. Their first class skill is that you get an additional plus 1 range on your phase. You can take that at level 10 as well, so you can phase things from pretty far away. Your second class skill is that allies within 2 tiles have an increased chance to dodge. It's pretty handy, makes Illusionist a good support character. The characters that you're going to run into as you play through Dark Deity who are mages, and you can recruit and make them into any of these classes, Ah, the first being Alden, and his default skill is that when he levels up, he can't get less than any four stats. That's pretty powerful. It means that if you manage to level up Alden, if you stick with him, if you carry him through that whole game, he'll be one of your stronger units statistically. Second mage is going to be Sloane, and her default skill is that fifth, she gets an increased 15% chance to hit when she's in melee range. So you have that one to two attack range. If you go for the one, 15% more accuracy. That option is Sarah, and her default skill is that attacking enemies marks them, increasing the damage taken. So, you want to attack with Sarah first, and then have other units follow up. The next, and probably one of the best, if not the best, is Monroe, and his default skill is his HP is increased by half of his mastery. So, if you dump into mastery, you get huge HP numbers in Monroe. You can get to 100 plus very 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 fast and there's some pretty insane builds that you can build with uh, this uh, HP increase by half of mastery. The last mage you're going to pick up is the last unit that you pick up in general and it's Liberty and hers is pretty simple default skill defense increased by 10% of magic makes her one of the better battle mages into Aegis if you want to go that route or it just makes her a bit more beefy if you're going glass cannon. That's going to wrap things up for our overview of the mage class. If you've had particular success or failure with specking a certain class line, grabbing level 10, level 30 class skills, combining those with aspects, combining those with default skills, well, we'd love to hear about it on the MGN.gg blog, our YouTube channel, of course, the new MGN Twitter, at MGN underscore TV, our new Discord. I'm going to put links for all these in the description of the video overview. This has been the Dark Deity class overview part 4. That's mage.